Hey guys, I'm really excited today to be able to show you LR Time Labs 5.5, a new version where I've been working more than six months on. And of course, LR Time Labs 5.5 is a free upgrade for everyone that owns a LR Time Labs 5 license, but also it's provided as free evaluation version as usually, so that you can try out the new features even if you don't have any license. The main thing that I've improved in LR Time Labs 5.5 is color management and color rendition in the final videos. And I've worked on this on two areas. The first area is the display of the previews in LR Time Lapse. So if you have a color managed screen, then you will be able to see color accurate previews now in LR Time Lapse as you can see them in Lightroom. And the second area concerns the whole workflow from Lightroom export to the video rendering in LR Time Lapse, which will produce much more accurate colors in the end result and also allow you to work with white gamut footage for further processing in a video editor. Of course, there are many other improvements in LR Time Lapse 5.5 also, and I would like to walk you through them right now. Let's start with the color management. The first area is that now you can color manage your previews in LR Time Lapse. Let's have a look. The first thing you will notice when you open up LR Time Lapse 5.5 might be the new icon here for the color management. And by default, it says no CM, no color management activated yet. So if you have a profiled and calibrated monitor, you will have a color profile associated in your operating system. So let's just set that up in LR time lapse. You go to edit in the menu, then settings. And on the previews tab, you just activate color management for previews. And then you need to set up the monitor profile of your operating system. So just click on choose here. And I recommend to sort by the latest one first here so that you will have the latest dates when the profiles have been changed here. And then you just select this one. Normally, the latest profile might be the one that your operating system is using. But to be certain, I'd recommend that you check out the settings in your operating system, whether Windows or Mac. On Windows, you right click on your desktop and choose display settings. And then you will get this dialogue with the screens that you have, maybe one or two or three, whatever. Then you choose the screen uh, where you have LR time lapse usually running on and you check out which color profile is set here. And then you remember the name or take a note of this color profile here. And this would be the one that you will be choosing here in this selector. And then you click on open and okay and you will need to restart LR time lapse for the changes to take effect. On Mac, this is quite similar. You go to your system preferences, then displays, and on the color tab here, you will see which display profile has been selected. In my case, I only have a headless Mac for remote access. That's why I see headless here. But in your case, you might have the right color profile displayed up here. And then again, you take a note and load that profile into LR time lapse. After reloading LR time lapse, you will see this CM icon here now is colored. And on the tooltip, you can see ICC color management active. And this means that now you will see color managed visual previews, but not only those previews, but also the previews in the render dialog or composition dialogs and so on will all be color managed. And of course, you only have to set up that ICC profile once and then LR time lapse will use that profile for your work. The second area of color management in LR time lapse 5.5 concerns the whole exporting and rendering workflow from editing your raw files to the final video. Let me explain how this was being handled in LR time lapse 5.4 and older and then I will show you what's the difference now. In other versions of LR time lapse, you would have your raw file and you would edit the keyframes and then do the export via LRT export plugin. And that plugin would export in Adobe RGB, which is a photo color space. It's a large one, 
but it's still aimed for photographic purposes. And later on, when rendering the video, we would have to do a transformation into a video color space, which would be REC 2020 usually, or REC 709. And as you can see, when transforming from Adobe RGB to REC 2020, which is bigger than Adobe RGB, we would lose some details in these areas at the edges here. And that transformation from a photo color space to video color space is always something that you would like to avoid to get the very best quality. Of course, quality hasn't been bad in the past, but um, there was a little bit of room for improvement and that's why I decided to take the chance. In LR Timelapse 5.5, of course, you would also edit the keyframes to the whole workflow and then when exporting, we will be exporting in REC 2020 right away from the RAW files. That means we won't have any further color space transformation from photo to video. We will go from the RAW files directly to the video color space REC 2020. And then when doing the final render in LR Timelapse, you will have the option either to render in 2020 or to choose the more common REC 709 color space, which is the de facto standard still for TV and video productions. But for those of you that know what they do and have a video editing program which supports REC 2020 processing, or those of you who would like to do HDR editing for videos and so on, would take a lot of profit from working directly in REC 2020 color space and uh, being able to render in that color space also for further editing. Speaking about rendering, let's have a look at the render dialog in LR Timelapse 5.5. We'll open the render dialog with file render video. And of course, this preview now here will be color managed as well. As you can see, we still have four codecs, but I exchanged one codec that is the old motion JPEG codec, uh, which I removed. And now we will have DNX HR codec. Those of you who do video professionally know that codec, it's from Avid, and it's a very common post-processing video codec, which is similar to ProRes. It's um, on the same level. Um, it's one of the codecs that you would use for further editing your footage. Let's have a look at those four codecs. I often get the question which one to use for which situations. And as a rule of thumb, I would recommend to use the upper two codecs, um, H.264 and H.265 for consumer work, for uh, scenarios where you would like to directly play back your footage from LR Timelapse or directly upload it to video platforms then those two upper codecs would be the right choice. But if you would like to edit your footage further in a video editing program like DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere Pro and so on, then I would recommend to use ProRes or DNX HR because they would give you much better quality for further processing. But of course, for all the codecs, apart from MP4, you would need the LR Timelapse Pro license. Let's have a look what else is new in this dialog. Down here we have the video level setting, which is new also. And video levels is something that the video guys uh, know. But if you come from a photographic background, you might not know it. Historically, in the video area, um, they used to work with limited video levels. They called it legal or TV levels. Basically, they wouldn't use the very blacks and the very whites, but only a range in between. And then for playback, the player would scale that dynamic range to the full range only for playback. And uh, today, most video editing tools and most video players automatically can detect if you are providing a video in legal range or in full range, and then decide how to play them back so that the contrasts look good. There might be cases where you will be rendering your video and everything looks nice in LR Timelapse and Lightroom, but when you play them back, the contrasts are off or when you bring that footage into 
a video editing program, the contrast is either too high or too low. And in that case, it might help to just change to the other setting here. As a rule of thumb again here, usually you could use full range for your rendering. Only if you experience any problems with your contrasts, then try to render in video TV range and see if that helps. Normally it should. And this gamut setting here in Alert Time 5.5 is derived from the intermediary sequence here, which uh, we have exported from Lightroom. If this one comes in 2020, which will be the default if you are working with Alert Time 5.5, then we will also be able to render in 2020. That's what I showed you here, that REC 2020 export will be transformed in a REC 2020 video. And the other option to go and render in REC 709 would be this option here. That means I recommend that you always use the default settings in the LRT export dialog to export in REC 2020. Then you will have all the colors available in alert timelapse for rendering. And later here, you can decide if you would like to go 709 or 2020, depending on what you're planning to do. In most of the cases, REC 709 might be the most compatible choice. If you experience any problems with colors, go REC 709. I would only recommend to really render in REC 2020 here if you really know what you do and if your video editor supports that huge color space. There are some changes in the graphical user interface also. Let's have a look. First of all, I've improved the performance in many areas. Video playback would be faster, the video rendering will be faster, and also the sequence loading will be faster. Also, I've done some improvements to the contrast of the colors in the tree, and also the menus on Windows have new colors and are better readable. The scroll bars are much more modern here. They are smaller and look nicer. So I hope you enjoy that small changes. I've also been working on the compositions feature. To create a composition, you would go to File, Create Composition, then choose one of your intermediary sequences that you have already exported from Lightroom. And uh, then a lot of time this will start to create a preview right away. So sometimes the previous settings are in a way that it will take very long to create that preview because you have set a number of stripes, which is quite high. Then you can just abort the preview creation here now. This is new in 5.5 and then you can just drag the number of stripes down to a lower number and then create another preview with that settings just to see how your composition would look like. A composition basically is a projected time-lapse sequence in one image. You will see your time-lapse sequence here in stripes from left to right or right to left. You can define that with all of those settings here. You can use a transition width to calculate smooth transitions between those stripes. It's up to you and a matter of taste how you would like to do it. Let me create the composition here. The next really nice feature now in 5.5 is that those compositions will have a color profile assigned and they will be fully color managed, which will be very helpful if you need to edit them further in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever. So now we have the composition here. Let's open it up. And now you can see this is our finished composition. And if you have a look of the embedded color space here, you will see it's BT 2020 reference display color space. It's the same one that we had in the intermediary sequence. So there is no color transformation going on here. And if you load the composition into Photoshop, Photoshop will be able to do a fully color managed workflow also. Let's have a look at the Lightroom export. There's a few changes there also. Exporting from Lightroom via LRT export, we have the same presets here. But when you look at the right, you will see the instructions have been gone here. Instead, I've added some links to my websites with instructions, frequently asked questions, video tutorials, user forum. There's another option here, which says color space 
export narrow gamut intermediaries REC709. I'd not recommend to use that because this would create the intermediary sequences already in the small color space REC709, which will not give you the option later in LR timelapse when rendering to choose a larger color space REC2020 anymore. So then you will be stuck to 709. I'd always recommend to do the color space decision later when rendering and export with the default settings here in REC2020. But one thing is really important. You will only be able to take profit of this new better color workflow in LR Timelapse 5.5 if you re-export your sequences. If you use your old intermediary sequences, which have been exported in Adobe RGB color space, you will only be able to render them in REC 709 anymore because anything else wouldn't make sense. So please just re-export important sequences in REC 2020 with a new LRT export module, then you will be able to have the full color options in LR Timelapse. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel because this is a new YouTube channel now. The old one will get deleted soon. That means if you subscribe to the old one in the past, please subscribe to the new one now because I'm planning to do some more tutorial videos quite soon. You probably noticed that I have a new video studio here and I'm really happy about that because it makes it much easier for me to make tutorial videos and also I think it looks much nicer uh, the way it is now. Leave me a comment if you like this video and uh, if you have any suggestions for specific tutorials, let me know also. I wish you all the best and especially much fun with the new LR Timelapse 5.5. Just go on and download it from lrtimelapse.com download, install it and be happy with it. See you next time. Bye bye.